Okay, hi there, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna take a look in this short video at this question. What is a deadweight loss of economic welfare? Well, the idea of a deadweight loss refers to the consequences for economic efficiency when a market is not at a point of equilibrium. And the concept links closely to that of uh, consumer and producer surplus. So let's take an example. Let's consider a market for a product where the initial equilibrium is at price B and quantity Q1. The equilibrium, of course, where supply meets demand at point D. Now, when, when that equilibrium is established, consumer surplus, the difference between what consumers are willing and able to pay and what they actually do have to pay in the market, well, consumer surplus is the area uh, shown by A, B, D. And producer surplus, the difference between what the producer is willing and able to supply the product for and the price they actually get, well, that's shown by the area C, B, D. If we add those two areas together, we get A, C, D, otherwise known as com community surplus or total economic welfare. Now, this market is in equilibrium, and in that sense, we're maximising the total area of economic welfare, A, C, D. Now, let's consider the effects of a government introducing a tax on this product. Uh, a specific tax, in fact, which results in an inward shift of the supply curve from supply to S2 plus tax. The tax per unit is shown by the vertical distance between the two supply curves. So the tax therefore causes the uh, market price to rise from B to E and the quantity traded will fall from Q1 to Q2. The producer has been able to pass on some of the tax to the consumer, and that's shown by the vertical distance B to E, but they must also absorb some of the tax, and that's shown by the vertical distance BF. So our green shaded area shows the total tax revenue accruing or flowing to the government. Now, crucially, the point here is that the tax has raised price and reduced quantity. It's raised price above and taken quantity below what the, more, the normal market equ equilibrium situation would be. So after the tax, higher prices resulting from the tax leads to a drop in consumer surplus. That's now equal to the area AEG. The producer also suffers. The producer sees a cut in their post-tax revenue. They get to keep price F. They're only producing quantity Q2. The new area of producer surplus is area FHC. Now, the deadweight loss is our key focus here, isn't it? A deadweight loss is the loss of economic efficiency in terms of, let's say, the utility or the return for consumers and producers when an optimal, allocatively efficient outcome is not achieved. As a result of this tax, squeezing the quantity to Q2 and driving the price up to E instead of B, there is an area of deadweight loss, that triangle, can you see it in the middle there, equal to the area GDH. That is the deadweight loss of welfare due to the tax. So the deadweight loss of welfare is a concept that you can bring into your analysis and score well on uh, really impressed the examiners, uh, particularly when you get a question, for example, on the effects of intervention. It could be an indirect tax, it could be a government subsidy, it could be the consequences for a market of having a price ceiling, a maximum price, or perhaps a price floor, a minimum price. You could bring the discussion in, uh, apply the idea in the discussion of the economic effects of a trade tariff, an import tariff, or perhaps a quota, some form of protectionism in the market. You can certainly use it in terms of the consequences of monopoly power for economic and consumer welfare. Let's just take a quick look at that. I'm gonna use a kind of year one analysis rather than a year two cost and revenue analysis for this. So let's consider again our simple market where the normal competitive equilibrium is at price B and quantity Q1, but we're gonna assume the monopoly only produces Q2 and charges a high price E. In other words, they use their market power to set a higher price. Now, this increases the producer surplus, their profit effectively, but at the expense of consumer surplus. 
So at the price E, if you like the monopoly price, the consumer surplus is just the area AEG. So the real return, the real utility to consumers has been squeezed by the market power of the monopolist. The monopoly is better off, their producer surplus is area EGHC. So there's been a shift of consumer surplus from consumer to monopoly. But again, there will be a deadweight loss. The output is lower at Q2 than it would otherwise have been Q1. So therefore the deadweight loss due to monopoly power is the area G. HD going the other way. And the reason is because the monopoly price is allocatively inefficient. So you can use deadweight loss whenever you think that a market is not achieving an allocatively efficient uh, use of scarce resources. But please keep in mind that oftentimes a tax is justified on grounds of one or more market failures. Uh, currently, big debates about whether there should be a tax on plastic packaging or a tax on high sugar, high salt, high fat foods. Uh, freely functioning markets often uh, fail to take into account the effects of externalities, both positive and negative, from production and consumption. There could be a case for some form of intervention to address that so that the market takes into account from a social welfare point of view the consequences of, of activity. So whenever you get a question in terms of deadweight loss and whether or not, whether you think an intervention is working or not, consider the likely net effect on economic and social welfare from the intervention. Does the intervention actually lead to, in overall terms, a better allocation of scarce resources from a social welfare point of view rather than just narrowly an economic welfare concept? Well, hopefully that will have taken you through two examples. Uh, we've looked at tax and monopoly, which uh, which explains the idea of a deadweight loss of welfare. Okay, thanks for joining in. See you all next time.